Hey guys, Chip here. Today I want to talk about vibe coding. Vibe coding, it's uh, basically using AI to code for you, typically to create web applications or websites. You can also use it to write Blender add-ons and other things like that. I decided I wanted to learn more about it and improve my skills and get up to speed on it. And so this past weekend, I did a bit of a deep dive into the whole vibe coding situation and, and took a peek at all the alternatives. And the first thing I did is I watched a lot of videos and did a bunch of research using different AIs to learn more about the platforms. I talked to some developer friends of mine and I compiled this document and basically looked at all these different platforms. You can see there's Replit, Bubble, Vio, Emergent, Level. I looked at a bunch of these different ones, Mocha, Bolt, and I narrowed it down to Lovable, Mocha versus GitHub Copilot. I realized that GitHub Copilot was really for people that wanted an AI to help them code, but it wasn't to take over the coding. So I really came down to Lovable versus Mocha were the two that I thought were best for me. But I really wanted to do what's called full stack coding, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. And I wanted to do it easily without a whole lot of setup and a whole lot of configuration. And so I did that. And basically I've got a bunch of notes on all of that, and I'd like to share them with you. At the end of this video, I'm going to play an interview that I did with an AI, and it'll kind of go over my findings from both these. But first, let me show you what I did, one of the things I found out is that you need to create this thing called a PRD, a product requirements document. If you're new to programming, that's basically just a specification. And it's really easy to do. You can just take any AI, ChatGPT or Gemini or Claude or Brock, any, any AI you want, and just ask it to help you develop a PRD, just to ask you one question at a time. And so in doing that, you're going to get asked to do a problem statement and it'll generate all this for you. Once it's done interviewing you, it'll give you the document. You can cut and paste it into Google Docs or whatever. So the PRD was real important because really when you start to talk to an AI about coding, what you want to do is you want to be very specified about what it is that you want. Really helps if you have screenshots or, or wireframes or layouts, or even examples of, of styles you like. So the first thing I did is I jumped into Mocha. And I liked Mocha because it was a full stack system. Everything was contained in itself. When I say full stack, I mean, it's got its own database, its own web server, its own AI, its own code repositories. The way this works is you basically type in here and you can be in discuss mode or not. Discuss mode just means that when you type in here, it's not going to generate any code. When you're out of discuss mode, it'll basically try and generate code unless you ask it a specific question. A lot of these different AIs will, every time you ask it a question and it codes, it's going to ding you for credits. I think I ended up, I, I bought into both platforms, both Lovable and Mocha at the lowest level. And this particular one, I think I had 2000 credits at the bronze level. If you look now, I've got almost half of them still remaining. I was able to generate a whole website and it's really a spec website. It's not a, it's, I call it a scaffolding. I call it design magician and I'll show it to you. It's very basic, but it's got some features that I know that I want to use for creating a website. And those features have to do with logging in using Google Authenticate to be able to access their Google Drive. And I'll show you that in a second. So this did a really pretty good job of taking my PRD because I put the PRD in here and then I, I discussed, I asked, Hey, well, what, what do you want to do? you know, with this PRD, what's the best way to move forward? And it told me, and then I said, okay, let's generate some code. And I was surprised at how well it did. The only thing is it wasn't a particularly good looking website. So I asked it to give it a dark theme and I rendered this background image in mid journey. And then it did a real good job. Overall, I gotta say Mocha does a great job of thinking through your design and doing a lot of things that you may not expect. It actually did a really good job of laying out all the screens, and it was the easiest and took the least amount of time to generate versus lovable. There are some issues with Mocha. In particular, one of the biggest ones is that I asked it to do something. I couldn't get something working and it actually reverted it somehow. It reverted back to a much older, even with the very first website that I had with the ugly interfaces and everything. I couldn't figure out what to do. So I asked support and support couldn't get back to me or didn't get back to me over 24 hours. And it's just like, oh, this is crazy. So then I went to lovable. And Lovable is kind of the big daddy. I mean, Mocha, by the way, I should mention, it's a small company that just launched. Guys are really smart. It may be smarter than Lovable's in terms of its coding ability. The whole application platform isn't as finished in many ways, even though it looks beautiful and generates beautiful websites. There are some big questions about it. We'll get to those here in a little bit. 
Then I went to Lovable. Lovable's got the same mode, chat and non-chat. And with Lovable, I ran through my credits really fast. And I'm currently on the $50 plan. With Mocha, I had the $20 plan and I only used half of it. Lovable, I'm about $40 through on the $50 plan. And I've basically created the same website for both of these. I spent a little more time tweaking the design because the design quality wasn't near as good as it was. But it gave me some cool things. I can use this website without having to publish it, which I couldn't do in Mocha. There were some authentication issues with Mocha in particular. When Mocha is using this dashboard area, it uses this kind of crazy UUID number every time it runs a sandbox. Google Authenticate can't authenticate because that number is always changing. Whereas with Lovable, that's not the case. Lovable, you do get that, but when you kick it out with Lovable like this, you know, this is what you're running. And you don't get the same thing. As far as I can tell, you don't get the same thing with Mocha. Here's what Mocha has. You do have this, but this is actually the published site. This is not a sandbox site. Whereas in this case, this is the sandbox site. So anyway, that's the way these things work. Lovable takes a lot more prompts to get through trying to get stuff done. It takes more prompts and it doesn't have a database and a web server integrated. But that being said, it does have hookups to ones that they recommend that are, that are wonderful and work really well. It's not quite as easy as Mocha, but it's pretty easy. Let's take a look at the website. So I'm going to go into here. This is a little more finished. This is the lovable one. So the whole idea behind this website is you want to sign in with your account and you can basically, you know, anybody can sign in with a Google account. And then we have dashboard settings. I have this admin because I'm an actual admin. It gives me credits. So I've got a dashboard and I've got settings. In my settings, I've got account information, uses, statistics. I can buy more credits, although I did not hook up the e-commerce to either one of these yet. I have Google Drive integration and I can connect and disconnect and automatically save new images generated. And then I have in my dashboard, this, this, this start generating thing. I've got this replicate. This is a proof of concept, just using replicate to create images. So a dog eating a bone. If I do that, you'll see that this generates an image and these are other images it has generated. And there's the dog eating the bone. You can see here, I can download this. I can actually save it to the cloud because over here, I've got it already set up to automatically save it to the cloud. I should be able to just go over here and say, open my Google Drive. And there it is. It's already put it up over there. So that's what that does. That's the website. There's an admin area here also, and I can export a CSV, jump into a maintenance mode. I've set credits per generation. I can manage each one of these different people here. I can ban users and stuff like this. It's a pretty nice layout. This is a lovable version. This is the Mocha version. You can see very similar. This has got the POC. It's also got some other stuff in here, but these are just placeholders. It's not coming soon. But again, you go in here and a dog eating a bone. And again, you generate the images and do the same thing. The whole idea was to build this website and see how well it went. I have to say that the Mocha was easier to build, but it had a much more difficult time getting customer support. Evidently, if I scroll down here, there was a thing on the Discord. They both have Discord servers and somebody says they tried to import a prompt and got a message, project size limit exceeded for bronze tier. It says, I have more credits. So I don't understand what that means. I'm still trying to learn more about that, but it says, hey, this isn't anything to do with credits because there's a lot of code in your files. There's an upper limit for how big an app can be for bronze mocha to handle it. So that's concerning. So because of that and the lack of support, I decided to focus on lovable for at this time. So let's go ahead now and let me show you the AI interview. And I apologize for the voices, but that's just the best I could do. <laughs> anyway, well, thanks for watching and we'll see you online. Uh, one thing I should mention also is that I have a Discord server set up and we've got some AI stuff and an AI gallery in here. And we do a lot of talking about that. I do a lot of work in Blender for those of you who don't know. All right, some add-ons there. These are interesting places. I'm going to expand some of the AI stuff, especially the vibe coding stuff here on my Discord if you're interested. And the other thing is that I also have a Patreon. I've got about 6,000 people on the Discord and maybe 1,000 here on the Patreon. I upload a lot of code and different stuff and talk about AI there as well. What first drew you to vibe coding? As we go through life, there are many times we need to reinvent ourselves in order to keep up with social situations. I think now is the time for people to think seriously about how AI is going to influence their life and their livelihood. 
So I wanted to jump into Vibe Coding because I see that as an opportunity for me to develop my own skills quickly and be able to do things that I never could before. What types of projects are you most excited to build with Vibe Coding? I have been developing software add-ons for Blender 3D, and I want to integrate AI into some of those add-ons. I currently have close to 100,000 users of my products, which gives me a built-in marketing platform for outreach. How do you envision AI integration enhancing your Blender add-ons? That's still up in the air. First, I want to understand how Vibe Coding fits into this and how difficult it will be to implement my ideas. So I started a project to create a basic scaffolding for a user experience on a website using a Vibe Coded web app hooked up to Replicate. This lets me experiment with AI image generation workflows, such as chaining images between different generators. What was your experience selecting a Vibe Coding platform? Choosing a platform was my first real challenge. I did research through YouTube videos, AI chats, and talking to developers, building a product matrix comparing features. Many Vibe Coding platforms expect some full stack experience, which I lack. I wanted one that would let me prototype quickly without setting up a full stack myself. Narrowing it down, I chose Mocha and Lovable because both claimed no full stack experience was needed and promised quick user experience creation. Can you explain what you mean by full stack in this context? Sure. Full stack means having an AI that generates and stores code, builds and hosts a website, and runs back-end services like databases. I wanted to ensure I could use these elements with as little manual setup as possible. Having Google authentication was essential. Mocha had all these integrated out of the box, so I started with Mocha. What was your experience building your app on Mocha? I created a product requirements document, a PRD, based on notes from a YouTube video and uploaded it to Mocha. Both Mocha and Lovable have chat modes where you can discuss the app before coding, so I asked Mocha to understand the PRD and suggest improvements. Mocha built a nice website, but initially with poor color choices, so I asked for a dark theme and provided a background image from Midjourney. It handled UX Edge cases gracefully. The main app allowed users to authenticate with Google, generate stable diffusion images via Replicate with a credit system, and save images to their Google Drive or local device. Did you encounter any difficulties on Mocha? Yes. The biggest was setting up Google Drive access. My Google Cloud Console wasn't configured correctly for external user authentication, so I had to fix redirect URLs and JavaScript origins both in Google Cloud and Mocha settings. After some fiddling, I got it working and added admin features like user banning, maintenance mode, and admin roles. However, a frustrating bug made the UI revert to a previous version I discarded hours earlier, blocking progress. I tried Discord, support tickets, email, and Twitter, but got no response after 24 hours, which was a huge red flag. How did your experience differ when you switched to Lovable? I signed up for Lovable's $25 plan, gave it the same PRD and a site design image. Its code generation was decent, but design quality wasn't as polished as Mocha. It struggles more with edge cases than Mocha. Setting up the database and web hosting via Superbase was straightforward, but a bit more involved than Mocha. Lovable uses credits faster, so I upgraded my plan to $1.50 slash month to get comparable work done. What about Google authentication on Lovable? It worked but required more effort setting up than did Mocha. It's unclear if the challenges were Lovable related or Google Cloud related. A big plus for Lovable is its GitHub integration, allowing code backups and easier future edits or migrations if the platform changes or shuts down. Any other notable differences? Lovable lets you edit web pages directly for fonts, styles, and text content, unlike Mocha, where such customizations are limited. Support on Lovable was impressive. Quick, detailed responses came from an AI chat on their paid tier, which felt like real engagement. They also have Discord, but their actual immediate support was a standout. Overall, how do you compare Mocha and Lovable? Mocha is great for quick prototypes with better initial design and handles UX contingencies well, but lack of support and rumored app size limits are deal breakers for scaling or commercial projects. Lovable, though less polished and slower to set up, offers better support, real code control via GitHub, and feels like a mature Vibe platform suitable for serious application development.
How do these experiences influence your priorities for future vibe coding projects? Fast prototyping remains valuable, and Mocha might serve that purpose early on. But customer support responsiveness, platform reliability, ease of scaling, and code ownership are critical if I want to build apps professionally to generate income. So Lovable is where my focus will be. Given that you haven't received any support from Mocha after 48 hours, how has that shaped your confidence in their platform? That's a clear red flag. For a small but growing startup like Mocha, failing to provide timely support shows a lack of organizational maturity. It makes me think I can't rely on them for apps that need uptime, growth, or revenue generation. Lovable support experience was night and day in comparison. What will be your biggest criteria moving forward when choosing a platform for vibe coding? At this time, definitely support quality and scalability. If I'm building real products for users that generate income, I need confidence that the platform can handle growth and promptly help when problems arise.